All right, I think we'll start and as more people join, they can just jump in. So good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. My name is Thomas from H Academy. And I have Dennis here today as well. Super excited to have you. Welcome to H Academy's free coding workshop. And to give you a quick background who we are, happier.io is a job platform for the modern job seeker offering jobs, skills, and career coaching. We help you in three ways. The first is helping you find jobs that align to your values and purpose. The second is to help you upskill, reskill, so you can future-proof your career. And third, we'll be able to help you with career advice or connect you to career coaches to help you navigate your career. You can think of us as a career in your pocket for modern job seekers. Our academy, H Academy, brings you best-in-class instructors, quality courses, and second-to-none career support. As recruitment is part of our DNA, and we have relationships with thousands of companies. You'll be in good hands when it comes to finding a job, to finding a job through us. This workshop is for anyone considering to pivot their career into software engineering. Today, you'll hear from Dennis Chung, an experienced instructor who has real world experience, development experience. Students taught by Dennis now work in Goldman Sachs, IBM, SCMP, Bowtie, and more. So he's very, very experienced. We hope today you can get a taste for a career in coding, learning, something new and get all your questions answered. So for any Q&A, feel free to pop the questions into the box below and we'll go over those towards the end. So with that, I'm gonna pass it to Dennis. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the introduction. Um, all right, so let me share my screen and set up uh, first. Let's see. So where is the share screen? That's it. And I share screen. Thank you. Okay, I think it's working this way. Okay, yeah. So it should be sharing now. Okay, so let me go over here. Uh, all right, so. All right, so, okay, all right, so. That's good. So now we can start. Um, so thank you everybody for coming in. Um, so my name is Dennis. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what is a developer and some questions that people often ask me. Um, so if the first question is, what is a developer? Um, the simplest answer is that it takes a design and turn it into a website. Um, now this can be a lot of things. It can be minor stuff like changing font size or adding new images and stuff like that, uh, to stuff like building everything available on Instagram, like all the features that they have, the like features, um, the scroll down features and everything. Um, this often scares people because they feel overwhelmed by these features or they come across uh, a really difficult problem that they cannot solve. Um, I myself, for example, um, gets overwhelmed all the time by problems that is that takes me like 30 minutes or even like a day to solve. Um, however, once you sit back, relax, um, and maybe take a nap and look at the problem again, you'll be able to divide these problems into smaller pieces. And once you have done that, you realize that all you have to do now is to solve the pieces one by one to make the full solution. Um, and in around 15 minutes um, after answering these questions, uh, I will do a demo on how to build a mini game. Uh, and hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate how a developer works. Okay, so there are actually three types of developers. Um, we have the front end developer that work on the client side, which is on the left. Uh, and, and that's where all the users sees their things, um, interact with it, click on it, uh, scroll with it and everything. And then we have the back end developer that work on the server side, which is on the right. Um, where the data is processed. So for example, you are trying to log into a website. What the server will do is um, check your password to see if it's the same as the stored password. 
um, and then they will turn uh, and they will give you a feedback saying, "Okay, yes, you're the person. You can log in now. Please proceed." Um, now for and then now we have the finally we have the full stack developers, uh, which is good in both. Um, most of the time, people often choose to specialize in one uh, the front end or the back end, um, just because they like it or they do or, or they um, do it better uh, than the other side. Um, so don't worry too much about which side is better for you right now, or you're trying to look for a resource saying, "Oh, what should I become?" And they say front end developer, and you go right into it. Um, right now, it's actually better for you to actually learn both sides. Um, and in our course, we aim to make you full stack capable um, so that later on, if you really want to specialize, um, then you can go on and choose whichever one you want. OK, so now we can do some questions that I always get very often. Um, CS degree VS boot camps. Um, <laughs> it, this really, really comes down to time and money. Uh, for CS degree, the tuition fee is usually very high. It takes around, what is it, like three to five months to get a degree. Um, however, boot camps are much cheaper and takes around 12 to 16 weeks. Um, this is achievable because boot camps focus purely on websites, where university are teaching you higher level concepts that are rarely used in websites. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that these concepts are completely useless in web development. What I'm saying is you don't need them when starting out in, as a career, uh, as a new career, as a developer. Because at some point in the future, you can learn it or read about it when you actually need to use them. Um, so yeah, um, one of the features of our immersive course is the ability to work on real life projects. Um, and, I've and I believe this is something that um, uh, not a lot of boot camps have done uh, because Julie, both Julio and I have connections to companies. So for your final project, you can actually work on a personal project or business idea um, or to choose on a web, uh, uh, or, uh, uh, or to choose to work on a project for startups, uh, which will look really, really good on your website. Sorry, uh, resume. All right, um, let's see. The question is, will employers hire a bootcamp graduate? The simple answer is yes, because unlike other industry, most employers don't put huge emphasis on a person's education background, but instead focus on their experience and skill level. Uh, I mean, some do still look at your education and say, oh, you're not from a CSDB background, we're not gonna hire. Uh, but that's really rare in um, development. For example, uh, most employers trying to hire a junior level will actually focus on their on a person's ability to learn, ability to communicate well, and have good understanding of how things work, um, even if they don't know how to code them. But as long as they know how it works, um, then they're good. This is because CS degree sounds good, and as I said before, uh, university don't focus much on web development. So they technically have to learn from scratch if they have never done it as a hobby. Um, with that being said, your first job will probably be the hardest, not because it's hard to find a job, but because you have to work hard to prove yourself first and to adapt to your working environment. But once you settle in, recruiters will come harassing you. And I'm not even joking. Um, like every month there are 10 to 20 recruiters asking me if I'm interested in a role. There are just spam and spam on messages. And I believe it's not just me. Um, this is all my students, all my colleagues, and probably most developers around the world has experienced the same thing. Um, and I'll get to the reason why, uh, which is the next slide. So here, you, so how high is the competition for positions? Um, as I said before, you're gonna get you're gonna get harassed by recruiters constantly, um, and this is exactly the reason. Because if you look at the chart, uh, this is from US, by the way. So if you look at the chart, um, ever since internet and mobile apps gained popularity, the demand for developers is growing very fast. Um, and here you can actually see that there is actually a surplus, which is the I guess 
orange yellowish part uh, since 2011. And this includes other programming jobs like security, AI, IoT, uh, crypto probably, um, FinTech and all these other programming jobs. Um, but it's also, but, it, that, but this is a good indicator um, of Hong Kong too and of the web development uh, industry. So the basic idea here is that you can get a job or you will be able to get a job as long as you have the core knowledge of web development. Um, and just to give you some encouragement for most of my colleagues, if they go look for a new job today and if they're not picky about the salary or the location, they can pretty much find a job within two to three weeks and probably even a week if, they, if, if the company is really urgent to find a developer. Okay, so this question is the, what are the career paths for web developers? Um, so ignore the numbers for now. Uh, we will talk about that later. Uh, I mean, it looks really tempting, um, but I'll talk about that later. So first of all, what are the career paths for developers, right? You have uh, web development is something that is really easy to start. Uh, because you really you specifically focus on the website. You have the front end and the back end. That's it, right? Um, however, for however, there are other jobs uh, or industry that requires coding. So data science is one of them. Um, so big data is something that is really huge around the world right now, especially like companies like Facebook and Google. And the reason is because uh, big data is actually collecting your pref well, not preference, they're not, I'm just, they would collect your privacy data in a sense, uh, like what you like, what did you, what website did you go to, uh, what location did you go to, or what are the music that you listen to, or uh, when you go to amazon.com, um, what products were you searching for? Were you searching for like mobiles, mobile phones, or you're searching for computer parts? Then what will happen is that Next time you open up some other website um, and it has an ad in it, it will actually refer you to something that you probably search most recently or that you have spent a long time looking into uh, or maybe even like music recommendation on Spotify, right? And all these data requires a data scientist to actually analyze, um, to work around and, and to build models and to see what is significant and to see uh, what is the current trends for this person uh, so that I can recommend something. Um, so the next we have AI. Uh, AI and machine learning come really hand to hand and it also comes hand to hand in to data science uh, just because uh, data science is basically collecting data, analyzing data and they can actually throw these data to the AI and teach them how to do stuff, um, which is why both of those come hand to hand. Now, AI is quite versatile. It tech based tech, technically speaking, whatever a human can do, a AI can also do. But the gotcha is that you need enough data and you need to write a good code base for the AI to actually start learning. Then it can actually do what you want to do. Um, and as I said previously, like Music recommendation is such as one of such. Um, the Google, uh, YouTube algorithms; those are all AIs. Uh, and in another, in another example, uh, in another field, is a company that flies drones across train rails. Um, and so what they do is that they have point the camera to the rail system, and they will actually look for spots that needs repair. While if you actually do it humanly. Uh, then what will happen is they have to just close down the track or find a time when the train is not there and they walk the rail and they inspect with their eyes. Um, and this company is doing really great. Uh, I forgot the name, by the way, um, but I remember they're based in Hong Kong. Okay, so the next one is games. Um, so games, um, there's a lot of parts to game. Uh, you have the game level, uh, game level designers, you have the actual like people or like the background designers, like whatever, like the drawings part. Um, and then you also have the actual developers that will actually do the coding, uh, build out the models 
and use the physics engine to do something. So those there, there are those guys. Now, there are many games such as uh, uh, in console, PC, and mobile games, and they are used made by engines, right? Uh, the one of the most famous one is probably Unreal Engine. I'm not sure you guys heard about it. Um, and the other one is Unity. So both of these can actually port to any uh, system you want. Um, and however, this is this gaming coding job is a little bit difficult, uh, not because of how to code or whatever or the three D models. It's actually because of vectors. Uh, now I'm sure you heard of calculus. Um, vectors is something else, and don't ask me any advice on it because I hate it myself. Um, but you need to be good at vectors. Now, the next one we have is IoT. So IoT stands for Internet of Things. And in many cases, it's actually the hardware device that have internet capabilities. So for example, a device that turns on the lights on and off with your phone through the internet, right? Another one is like some really cool device, which is a smartwatch or smart fridge. A smart fridge, for example, is it will tell you or send a message to your phone saying, hey, your eggs is running out or your milk is going to be expired. Uh, please get some new ones. Um, so there are those. And the last one, we have mobile app. Um, so many web developers will naturally become mobile developers. Um, this is because a lot of companies don't just want a website. They want the full service. They want uh, websites. They want mobile apps. Um, so that's why a lot of web developers also gear, uh, gear toward mobile development just because of this reason. Um, now, there are two languages, one for iOS and one for Android. Uh, and I believe it, so it's called, so Swift is for iOS and Java is for Android. Um, but for us developers, there's actually something called React Native. So what React Native does is take the languages or so HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that we normally use, and they will actually compile the code and, uh, and translate it to Swift and Java. So for us web developers, we don't actually need to learn it uh, through Swift and Java. We can just build on the stuff that we already use, um, which is really great. Now for web developers, um, I mean, I already did that. And there are actually many more. There are actually security, uh, cybersecurity, which mostly just go look into uh, preventing uh, database leaks um, and such like that. Uh, there are also like penetration tests, but I'm not sure if that uh, has anything to do with coding. It might be. Um, I'm not really sure in that. Um, but anyway, so now we can actually look at the salaries. Um, as you can see, web developers don't have the highest range um, where AI and games, or sorry, AI and IoT has the highest. Uh, and there's a reason for it because web development is actually very specific, right? We are only building websites and it's not rocket science. It's not something really hard to build. Um, as long as you have the time and understanding for it, you can do it, right? And at the very high level, those people are just doing it better they have more experience, so they have. So once you once they want to do something new, they're able to think of a uh, architecture or basically how to do a specific feature really quickly and reliably. Um, now, AI, as I said, it's very versatile, uh, which is why they get like they, people pay millions of dollars for it. Uh, I mean, take Google for example; um, they hire a lot of. Uh, uh, developers to do their AI because what is it? YouTube, their Google search, all of these uses AI to actually do uh, better searching or like good video recommendations and, and all these uh, features, right? So that's why AI gets paid the most. Now, IoT is, very, is also very similar in the sense where you're actually developing a hardware product and you're making a new system to work with that hardware. So to a sense, it's also, the difficulty level is also very high, uh, which is why the salary is also 
a little bit uh, a little bit higher. Now for the rest of the other ones, uh, they're around the same. Um, and by the way, so this is the left side is the usually around the entry price and the right side is the usually the maximum price in the Hong Kong market. Um, okay, so mobile apps, uh, and even though they get like the higher range, the, high, the highest range is basically the same. The lower range is actually a little bit higher. And the reason for it is um, it's really specific, right? You need to really be specified uh, spe you need to be specialized in either Swiss or Java to actually do something, um, which is why they also get paid higher than a web developer. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it, right? Um, any questions so far? Uh, actually, let me open it up. Uh, yes. So yes, we will re we will reply uh, the answer uh, your questions after the session, uh, after the demo session. Um, are there any new opportunities in of IOTs in Hong Kong? Uh, there is. Um, I'm not really that aware of it. I know of it. In a few years ago, there's been a lot of uh, like the coffee machine, for example. I'm not sure if you heard about it. I'm not sure if it still exists. Uh, but a few years back, uh, there's like a group of people that was building a coffee machine. Uh, and what you can do is through your mobile app, uh, connect to the coffee machine and build your own coffee. Um, I think it was like, maybe if you want an espresso, then they will make you an espresso or a latte, how many percent milk, how many percent coffee, that sort of thing. Um, regardless of, uh, regarding other IOTs, I'm not really sure because I don't really look too much into that section. Um, so but I hopefully that answers your question. All right, so it seems like that's all the questions. And let me see if the chat has anything to say. All right. Okay, cool. All right, so now we wanna go for a demo and just before my battery dies. Let me plug in first. So give me a second real quick. Okay, so All right, so what I'm gonna to do today is just a simple tic-tac-toe game. Um, and the reason I wanna do it is because I wanna demonstrate how to break down some problems um, and solve them one by one to make a full solution, right? So first of all, a tic-tac-toe, and I hope everybody knows this. Like, I mean, it's like a three by three and um, whoever gets three in a row wins, right? So what we need is a grid. So a three times three, Great. Okay. Um, and then what do we need to do? We need to tell the computer um, to put boxes in X and O. Sorry, put X and O in boxes, right? So we need to be able to put X or O in boxes, right? Now, as a human, when I play tic-tac-toe, I can visually uh, I can visually see how, who won or who lost, right? Because I can actually visually see there's three things next to each other, that's a win, right? But a computer does it, right? It's because it's just one and zeros. Unless you tell it to recognize that there's three Xs in a row, it's not gonna know that it's a win. So we also have to do uh, three in a row Now, in a normal grid, you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, right? So this is the 3 by 3. Now, normally, you want to do, so 0, 1, 2 is a win, 3, 4, 5 is a win, and so on and so forth. So you have uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then you have the uh, vertical ones, which is 
one, sorry, one, three, six, one, four, seven, and two, five, eight. Okay. And then you have the um, diagonals, which is zero, four, eight, and you have two, four, six. Okay. So this is basically the winning conditions. Okay. So now let's think a little bit uh, deeply, right? So for an X, um, what we want to do to this. So we want to basically detect, uh, or actually no, you know what? Let me do the grid first. So first let's do the grid, right? So we want to create a three by three grid. And with that, we can actually go to the HTML. And let me pull this over. Okay, so uh, let me stop sharing my screen for a second. So let me set this up. Okay, so let me re-square my screen. Where is my zip? Okay, so sorry about that. I was just trying to make it onto here. Okay, so here we have a blank page, right? So let's make a grid first. So we have HTML and we want to do tic tac toe. And then we want to connect to these things which have linked. And so this is script.css, sorry, style.css. And we have script. And then we have script.js. Okay, so here it's a very simple HTML setup. Uh, we can actually do here and say tic tac toe as a title. And then once we refresh, we will be able to see a text. All right. So now let's make the grid. So and there and this is three by three, so there's three boxes. So Sorry, nine boxes in total. Um, here. Okay. So, as you can see, we have the X's in here, right? Um, however, this is not three by three. So now we can actually go to the CSS style and say, um, so let's make everything centered first. So we have body center, and then we have grid. So we want to make it three by three. So let's make it this way, grid. So and make it so that I think it's grid template. Yeah, grid template. Repeat three auto. Okay, so. Here, you can see that it's now three by three, but it's so ugly because it's actually rectangles. So if you actually look here, it's actually rectangles, not squares. So let's make it to square. And we're gonna make it, uh, so both height and width is gonna be uh, 100 pixels. So you can see now, this is actually 100 pixels. However, the grid that we did is actually a rectangle. So as you can see the, uh, I think the purple lines. So let's make our grid 300 pixels, which is 100 times three, right? And this one is not centered. So let's make this centered. Um, okay. Um, 
So it's still, I mean, it looks nice, but it's still missing things. So first of all is that the text is not in the middle, right? It's actually at the top. So we can fix this by adding a line height. Line height. And then it's 100 pixels. Okay. And then the font is still very small. So let's change it to uh, font size 60 pixels. Okay. And we want some grid lines, right? Because it's actually a grid. So let's do border and fix solid black. Okay. So now we have a very simple looking grid. Um, and that's kind of it for the CSS. Uh, we're not going to do much more with that. Okay, so, so back to this note. So we have done the 3x3 grid, All right? So the next thing we want to do is put x or o in the box, All right? So how do we do that? So here we can use JavaScript. So with, uh, and JavaScript is basically a way for us to interact with our browser and the uh, HTML. So first, let's say, uh, let me think. So document dot selected. So what I'm doing is that since every single box is an individual box. Right. As you can see by the blue part, once I hover them, they actually highlight the individual box. So I'm actually taking all these individual box um, and adding an event listener to them. And what an event listener is, is basically a way for the browser to say um, when something happens, in this case, when a user clicked on the box, then I would do something. Add event listener. So we want to do a uh, click and we want to do handle cell click. So what the handle cell click is, it's actually a function. Now a function is this small piece of code that helps the uh, developer to section specific things um, into a smaller, much easier to handle uh, section or a task, let's say. So here I am. So what we want to do now is say, um, cell, uh, dot inner, uh, inner HTML equal to uh, let's say, oh, okay, so let's try that. Okay, so we click on it. It's actually changing, right? So we have done the first part. However, this is not the full solution because we actually want to do XO, XO, XO inter uh, intermittently. So we need to detect uh, whose turn is it and put the appropriate uh, 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 symbol or text, okay? Um, and what else can we think of, right? Because this is one, one, one small problem. Um, uh, let's say if, so we, so let's say, so you know what? Let's continue first and then we will discuss the Oh, somebody raised hand. Uh, let's see. So, okay, so okay. So let's continue. So we want to switch turns, right? So we can say let uh, let. equal to x, okay? And we want to, so every single, every time when we uh, click on it, we're gonna say 
current uh, cell inner cell is equal to current user, and then current user sorry current player is equal to current player, and we're going to change the turn to the other one. So okay, so now we try again. We have we have the x, we have the o, and it continues to switch, which is wrong because once we put something in there, uh, we don't want it to put another one. Okay, so let's actually get rid of the original x first. Okay, so what we're going to do is saying if the block box is empty, then put the text. Uh, and maybe if the box has content, have content, then print a message. Okay. So let's do the first part, which is if it's empty, right? So now this is a problem because um, clicking in here is good, but the computer doesn't recognize uh, whether or not it has something in it. Uh, and there's two ways to do it. We can do it the HTML way and we can do it the um, JavaScript way. So what I'm going to do is do the HTML way, which is making a grid of my own. So here we have, so here we have a grid, right? So every single time when somebody um, clicks in it, then I'll store that value in the appropriate box. Okay, so let's put this here. And here we will say, but however, I don't know where the person clicked. Because right now I'm only, I, I have, a, I know the box that I clicked, but I don't know which one, right? So what we can do is go to, um, HTML and add a specific data. So let's just call index equal to, and then we can say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So what this is actually saying is this box is box 0, this box is box 1, which corresponds to the 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. Okay, so here we can say constants cell index is equal to parse uh, int cell attribute, attribute data index. Okay, so we have get attributes data dot index. Okay. So, okay. So right now we're going to do is say, if this box already has, so if I, so we click on this, right? So this is box zero. Um, and we're going to say, does box zero has anything? In it? If it does, then don't put anything in. Simple as that. So we can write it out. So if grid, um, so index, is equal to that. And we can say, we can move these things in now. Um, and we can also store actual value inside it. So now we retrace test again. So now the x doesn't change. That's good. That's stage one. Uh, and the uh, so this we got this one. And now we want to also have the printed message. So we can do an else statement. Just do a simple console log and say this block is already in use. So if we go to here now, and you can see at the 
bottom right, that is actually printing the message. Okay, so we got this. So we got the, so we solve, so we made the put X and L solution by having these three smaller pieces. Okay, so now we want to do the winning condition. So it's a three in a row winning condition. So as we know, these are the condition. Okay, and we can actually put it out first. So we have winning conditions. So what we're going to do is have is basically every single time when somebody clicks, we would match the zero, one, two, if so basically match these three, if they are the same, right? So let me make that. So I believe this is correct. I hope I didn't miss type anything. Uh, we'll leave it at that for now. Um, okay, so as I said, right, um, we want to, every single time we click, we want to look at all these index, so uh, horizontally, vertically, and diagonally to see if any of those three values are the same. Right, so we can actually do that using a loop, uh, and I'll do a simple for loop for now. Um, smaller than how many solutions we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight, and we do I plus plus. Uh, there are smarter ways to do this, um, but I'm just doing this for simplicity's sake. Okay. So we want to get the winning condition, right? We have a winning condition equal to winning conditions. Remember, this is singular, this is plural. Um, so what this is giving you is every single time it starts again, it will give you the next one. So the first time it will give you this piece of code, the second time it will give you this, third time, fourth time, until it to the end. And let's say let a equal to grid, grid winning condition zero. So given this winning condition, we want to find, we want to get the zero index, which is this one, and set it equal to a. We want to get the one, set it equal to b. Get the two, set it equal to c. Okay. So b and c. And we we'll also change to that. Okay. So right now, what it's going to do is, um, okay, so right now we're going to actually set it and make a condition. So if A equal to B and B is equal to C, then we will say the winner is, um, is the current player equal to x, then we return o or we return x. Now, the reason I'm doing this exact same thing as I did previously, um, this is a dumb way to do it, but uh, it's because this is below this part. So if I don't do this, then the winner would be the other one because right now I, I clicked on a box, right? So it's O's turn. However, I checked, I'm checking the winning condition and the winning condition says the winner is currently O, right? So that's why I have to switch it back again to X to actually get the winner. Um, and in here, we can actually do uh, console log, uh, console log uh, winner is player for some reason I have something wrong oh 
That's why, because this is outside the loop. Sorry. There we go. And as you can see, I mix mistake too, and everybody does. Um, so it's no, not really a big deal. Okay, so here we have X, and why the hell is it giving me so many messages? Um, that's because right now we are checking if A, B, and C is equal. And in this case, this the middle row is also equal because this is empty, empty, empty. So all three of them is the same. Empty, empty, empty. So all three of them is the same. So that's why it's actually giving you way too many results. Um, so what we want to do and say is say, if A is empty, right? So if any of, so when I check, when I'm checking the middle column, for example, middle row, for example, if any one of them is empty, then I simply skip it because I know that will never be the winner. And in here, what the continue would do is simply uh, ignore anything below here and simply jump back to the start. So let's try. Uh, why is it still giving me that? That is interesting. So why are you giving me very interesting? Did I miss anything? And no, I don't think I missed anything. For some reason, and I already did some of the examples in here. So, well, let me check the condition real quick. Let me copy and paste some of the solutions that I did <laughs> early on. And as you can see, it, bugs happen. Um, and right now, I simply don't have the time to solve it. Okay. Winning condition. Um, that's why. Thank you, Graham. So, there you go. So, so yeah. So I was actually getting using the wrong one. I was supposed to use this one, but I added an S to it. So as you can see, typos and everything happens. Totally normal. Um, sometimes it takes minutes or hours to actually find a single typo mistakes, which is okay. Um, as long as you understand it uh, and try not try your best not to do it again. Okay, anyway, so now if we actually test this out and voila. So now you have winner is player. Okay, so here, this is the full solution there. We can actually do more to this, but I don't think we have the time to do it. Um, so hopefully that shows how I break down a really a big problem and do it small uh, and do break it down to smaller pieces and solve to smaller pieces one by one to make the full solution, right? And that's basically what a developer does um, from a daily basis. Uh, and one misconception is that we don't type like crazy fast. We don't type like a uh, 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 hundred words per minute or something. I mean, we do. We can, uh, but when we're actually working, we don't actually type that fast because most of the time we're thinking, we're debugging, and probably only like 10 to 20% of the time that you're actually spent typing. Um, anyway, 
So let's start with the questions. So where did we left off? So I'm interested in gaming, uh, but it is hard to get into. Is there any way to increase chances? Anything we can learn uh, or focus on? Um, yes, there is. Um, Udemy is a great place for it uh, because I know I myself learn Unity uh, through uh, Udemy. Uh, I mean, most of the time, uh, reading my reading the documentations of the actual program I'm using, basically the uh, instruction manual, um, is actually much quicker. Uh, but because I'm but because Unity is a software of its own, so there's a lot of kinks. There's a lot of tips that other people can give me. That's why I go, went to Udemy to uh, create uh, 2D games, basically learn by building games um, and also do uh, 3D games. Uh, so these are good, great way to start. Uh, you're not, you, you're not going to become a professional just by going to Udemy, um, but it gives you a good start, it teaches you how to learn, um, it teaches you some of the tricks. Um, so it's definitely a good start. Um, uh, let's see. So I'm currently doing a CPA. CPA is your accountant, one, right? Yeah. Um, would it be beneficial for me to learn? Uh, oh, there you go. Have to learn programming. Um, yes. Um, now I'm not sure. I mean, you're you're CPA, so I'm I'm sure you have dealt with uh, Excel sheets um, or some of the really bad accounting programs that somebody did or some other stuff like that. Um, now for auditor, is auditor, right? CPA, is that right? Is that accounting or auditor? Accounting. Accounting, oh, okay, so accounting. Okay, so for accounting, there would be like a lot of the uh, uh, um, really bad looking uh, bookkeeping uh, um, programs. Uh, or basically what people usually do is open up Excel and they just do their balance sheet and uh, income statements all over there. So what you can actually do is that uh, as long as you have uh, all the inputs already, they can actually, you can actually do it relatively quick. So for example, um, you can actually take uh, pictures of your receipt, for example, and have a recognition that automatically uh, recognize the value and the type of the receipt it is. And then using this data, you can make a code that takes this data and automatically add it to the book, right? So this is a good skill. Now, another skill, uh, which is much simpler, is the Excel macro. Now, I'm not sure if you're using Microsoft. In most cases, you are. Um, macro is really nice because it will actually help you do a lot of the balance sheets and everything in a structured way. And you can just copy that to some other place and then just do it for you. Um, and hopefully, that answers your question. Uh, let's see. For the course, can we use PC? Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, you can use a laptop, not a PC, because uh, I think PC stands for desktop and stuff like that. Um, but yes, you can use Windows. Um, but I don't recommend you doing that because Windows is really hard to set up, even for me. Uh, I once spent like two or three hours just to try to set it up and still fail. Um, I can help you to set up, but I won't guarantee that everything will work perfectly. Um, I would actually recommend you get a laptop um, and install Linux on it because that everything goes really much quicker on that. So you can do dual boot and then just do uh, install Linux and then just use that. Okay, so next one, oh, do I have to click it? Okay, so next one, I want to learn data science. This is good to code court, uh, to do coding cores and then data science. Um, well, first of all, it doesn't really matter because you need knowledge of both. Because I'm not a data scientist, I don't really know what they need to learn. Uh, and I mean, it's probably statistics is probably one of them. So probably polish that up first. Um, but data science is basically, uh, what they will usually do is make you get a lot of data from other places. Um, and then using this data, uh, mix something and analyze uh, and make something significant out of it. Now for the coding course, uh, what you can do is um, wait until you do data science because one of the complaints that I know people get is um, data science doesn't know how to make a good website. Um, and, and, and I'm not, I'm not dissing people uh, and there's a reason for it is because 
data science needs to, uh, these data scientists need to visualize their data to present to somebody else. So when you actually visualize the data and you look at a crappy website, I don't think that's gonna be really good. So that's why a lot of employers complain about this. Um, so in most cases, I'll say, learn data science first, um, uh, get good at it. And then once you actually need to build a website and stuff like that, then you start learning a coding course or part-time or something like that, or even online just to improve your UI skills and make your data look much better. Okay. So after the boot, after the boot camp, are you ready to get a job or you need to work on some special, some projects to get a job? Okay. So it really depends on your skill level. Um, I want to say that you can just go out there and get a job, but the reality is that um, it really depends on how much you have learned from the curriculum, right? So if you actually based off the curriculum, um, the average person is actually ready to go um, and start a job. But if you're, let's say, below average, you weren't able to pick up as quick as possible, it could be my fault because I, was, I wasn't able to teach you properly. Um, uh, but in most cases, these students will probably be um, a little bit harder to get a job. Then, then what happens is that you will actually need to um, do either do freelancing or do some internship just to get a little bit more experience and get, and get you up to speed um, in order for you to for your next big job. This one? Is it this one? Uh, I mean, I have a Windows laptop. Can I use it? Uh, yes, you can use Windows laptop. Uh, you don't have to use Mac. And as I said, uh, you can install Linux in it. Just don't use Windows. All right, um, for time, I'm just gonna quickly share some information. Cool. Let me copy this into the, uh, what was the link in the WhatsApp. So thank you everyone for joining. Uh, we're gonna attach a Google form to That's get right. your feedback. And also for everyone joining today, we're offering a voucher of 1000 HKD, which is valid for the next coding course starting May 10th. This is in addition to the current early discount. All you need to do is email Julio J-U-L-I-O at happier.io or WhatsApp him at 9528-7433. Again, that's 9528-7433 with the code H-A-M-A-Y. Stands for H Academy course in May. So thank you so much. Um, I'll let Dennis answer a few more questions. Yeah. And thank you to all of you. Have a good night for joining. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. So some of here is that, uh, so let's answer this one. Um, so I joined online boot camps before and they were hard to follow. Um, how is your course different and better? Now it really depends because most of the time the course material will probably be very similar because it's always just JavaScript, CSS and um, uh, um, an HTML, right? Uh, so it really comes down to how the instructor present their material. Because a lot of the times uh, if a instructor is new or they don't have experience teaching, what will happen is that they just, fall, they just read through the curriculum, which is really boring. Um, and that causes the student to lose interest. And once you lose interest, you will start to realize that it's so hard to follow stuff. Or they're talking in a really uh, difficult term. So they're not using layman terms. They're not using metaphors. They're just blasting through the curriculum just to hope that you get it. Um, and I personally am not like that. Uh, I do try my best to explain my curriculum in layman terms, um, just so that everybody can understand. And usually at the end of the class, I'll also talk individually to students just to see if they need any catching up to do. Also one thing, this course is in person, it's not online. So that's another big difference. Yeah, that's a big difference. Um, okay, so let's say I am a fresh grad and I spent a lot of time looking for a job, but find it really repetitive. Uh, with programming, help me, help me out with that. Uh, certainly, that really is that really is very uh, uh, a good thing. Um, so what will happen is there's something. So you can actually manipulate websites. So for example, you're filling a form in a website, right? Um, and you can actually just copy and paste as usual, or you can actually um, use uh, use AI or something to actually recognize. The, what they're asking for. Um, and because let's say you're doing banking, right? They have like t have 10 different banks, all of them have different application process. Um, so in that case, it's really difficult, but once you, if you actually learn 
programming and you get you're able to get to a certain level you can actually use um your program to identify specific things so okay so what is your uh how many years of experience you have in the university then you can actually match it to some of your pre-answer question and just paste it there right so that is that but if you're talking about really high level i can go to any website um just to fill in the forms that is actually really difficult to do uh even for me um so yeah okay uh let's see so any internship or work experience or upskill course you can recommend to potentially kickstart career and web development um yes actually um i would actually recommend the free courses so I, if you actually go to um wd school i think was it okay no uh no so let's say uh css school i forgot what the oh there we go w3 school so this is actually a, a open source like it's, it's uh, i don't know if it's open source but it has a lot of reference to a lot of things right you can see the normal stuff like html css javascript right so go through the tutorials just to see what they have to say about it so i'll say start with html just to mess around with it um and they ask they actually have like um course in here that i believe this is the course uh yes and i'm oh, not this one this is the oh i'm not showing three. oh sorry my bad sorry here so this is the w3 school i was talking about um and this is the html css javascript so they have a lot of resource um you can actually look at how stuff works and I believe they also have uh, like quizzes and everything for you um, that you can actually learn uh, from that. Okay, so let's see. Uh, and aside from that, the normal way of going into uh, Udemy, sure. Um, you're not probably, you're probably not gonna learn the classes with I mean, that's always the way. I mean, it's like, what, $10, $5 when it's on Black Friday? Spend that $5 just to see how it works, but I wouldn't recommend that much. Um, it's actually better to just go to these resources and go through them and learn from that. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I'll answer two more questions. Um, so let's see, any, are there many opportunities in, I, uh, in IoT in Hong Kong? Uh, yes and no. Uh, as far as I know, a lot of companies come to Hong Kong to start their company. Um, and I mean, for tax reason or whatever, right? But then they act, their manufacturing or their like design team is probably in China because that's where all the uh, uh, manufacturers are, right? Um, so in a sense, uh, you will probably be doing coding um, or doing some designs in Hong Kong um, while the actual design is being made in China. Uh, one good example is called Silent Mode. Uh, so this is one of my good friends. So Silent Mode, right? So this is a, a product that wraps around your, uh, your head. Uh, so basically it has like music and everything that helps you relax and helps you take 15 minute naps uh, just to power you up after that, right? And this is perfectly IoT because it actually connects to the app. Uh, you can control it however you want and stuff like that, okay? Um, oh, oops, so let's see. Uh, so last question, why be able to learn more advanced games and full stack course? <laughs> no, uh, I mean, it depends on your definition of advanced games because in our curriculum, the first project, which is at week three, sorry, yes, week three, you would be able to do a game. Um, however, it's HTML game. So in a sense, if you want to do 3D games using HTML engines and stuff like that, there's only four, there's only one week project. So I mean, sure, you can do that, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, yeah, uh, and, but aside from that, then it's, up to you, so. 
Let's see. Okay, so that's it. All right. Thank you so much again to everyone joined. Please fill out the form and thank you, Dennis, for joining us tonight. We're super excited to have you. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Right, thank you. Good night, everyone.